Hey guys, it's Andrew here from Seema Apps, and in this tutorial, we're going to look at Background Fetch. So Background Fetch is quite useful if you have an app and you need to get information in the background so it can save loading time in the app for the users. So one example of this might be you have an app which shows the latest news for the user. Now, every time the user launches the app, the news is loading and it takes a few seconds for them to actually get the news. So what Background Fetch can do is in the background, you can actually download the latest news. That way, the user has it straight away in the app and they don't have to wait any time at all to have a really quick, really cool to use app. And just two things to note about Background Fetch is number one, any task running in Background Fetch only has about 30 seconds to complete. Any time after that, an iOS will just cut it off. It won't be able to run anymore. So you want to make sure it's small and concise as to what it's actually doing. Number two, you can't actually time it to run at certain times. We will set it to run at the minimum interval. And also, if the user launched our hypothetical news app every morning, Background Fetch will try and run before they launch the app. So maybe half an hour before, an hour before, as much as it can, so they've got the latest news, and this is all controlled by iOS. So let's get into the coding. Okay, so I've created a new single view application here named SWBG Fetch. And first of all, what you need to do, you need to go to your project target, you need to go to capabilities, and you need to enable background modes, and then tick background fetch. So this is going to enable background fetch for your application, otherwise it will not work. Next up, let's go to the storyboard and set up our project to show how background checks and prove that it's working. So go to main.storyboard. And what we are going to do, we're going to add two labels to our app. So the first label, we're going to name time. We're going to stretch that out. And the second one, we're going to name weather. And we're going to stretch that out. So what our goal is, we're going to use background fetch to do two things. The first one is to just simply get to the time that the background fetch was run and set that label. And the second thing is we're going to actually call an API to get the weather for London and set this label to be what the current weather and temperature is in London. So we're gonna focus on, first of all, just getting the time working, then we'll do the API integration after. So with those on, open up your assistant editor and simply holding down the command key, I believe it is. No, it's a control key. Drag it into our view controller and we're going to name the first one label time as an outlet. And the second one we're going to name label weather as another outlet. Now we can close down the assistant editor now that they're connected up. And we're going to go to our view controller and we're going to create a new method called function update UI. This is going to take in two parameters, the weather as a string, and finally the temperature as a double. And what this is going to do, it's going to update the label and the weather. And what this is going to do, it's going to set the time and the weather labels. So we'll do label time dot text equals date. That's going to be the current date time. And we'll do label weather dot text. And that's going to be whatever we pass in as the weather and the temperature variables. So we'll do weather. And after we'll do the temperature as temp. And we're going to also add in a print statement here called update UI. And that date, we need to add our closing brackets after that. So this update UI function is actually going to be run as a background fetch task. 
and it's going to set the time to be the current time and the weather to whatever we pass in to the weather and temperature parameters. So now that we've done that, we simply go to the app delegate. We're going to get rid of everything except for did finish launch with options because we don't need it in this tutorial, make it a bit more cleaner. And in the did finish launching with options, you need to add UI application dot shared dot set minimum background fetch interval. And this has two options. You can do either none or UI application background fetch interval minimum. The other one was never. So never prevents it from actually occurring. Minimum means the smallest fetch interval will be supported by the system. So that means our background task will be as run as often as iOS allows it to run. Now finally, to use background fetch in our app delegate, we need to add a function here called perform fetch with handler. So if you start typing perform fetch with a handler here, we can see we have our order complete and that finishes off our function. So this is a function that runs when iOS will call our background fetch. So we're going to do if let VC for view controller equals window question mark dot root view controller as question mark view controller. And we're going to do VC dot update UI since it's referring to our view controller. And we're going to pass in dummy weather. So we'll do sunny and the temperature as um, simply 10.0 as a double. So this is getting a root view controller, casting it as our actual view controller here, calling the update UI function and passing in the weather as sunny and the temperature as 10. So before we run that, we need to set up something to actually test our background fetch. So up the top here, we need to go to manage schemes we want to duplicate this scheme here. So if we go to our settings, we can go duplicate the little cog and we're going to name back, uh, back fetch test. And you'll see here run has this background fetch. We simply tick that and this will run our app in a background fetch event state. So we need to close that. We'll close that. And now when we drop, drop this down, we have two schemes, our usual one to run the app and the second one to run our background fetch. So I'm going to run the app by itself just at all to show you how it runs without a background fetch and what the labels actually look like. Then we'll compare it to after a background fetch has happened. Okay, so now we can see our apps launched. Our labels are still time and weather. We haven't ran our background fetch, which calls update UI. So let's run the back fetch test and actually see what the difference is. So when we run that, you'll notice the app installs and in our console, the update UI console log gets called from our view controller. Where we go print update UI, that's in the console. However, our app doesn't actually launch because we set it up to just run the background fetch event. So if we jump into it now, here we go. We've got the actual time label set and our sunny and 10.0 weather label set. So we can see that it has successfully worked here. So that's pretty much how it actually works. Now let's actually integrate an API call here to get the weather for London and actually update this label. So let's check out how that works. So first of all, I'm going to use CocoaPods to install Swifty JSON because the API call is going to return back some JSON. Okay, so I'm going to go pod init here to set up our pod file. Okay, so now that our pod file is set up, we're going to open up in our code editor. And under use frameworks, we're going to add pod swift to JSON. Simply save that. Go back to our terminal and we're going to run pod install. And that will set up our XC workspace project to set up. Now, before we do that, you'll notice down here in the console logs, we actually got this completion handler was never called. So what's that all about? Well, quite simply, 
you're supposed to in so quite simply in the app delegate you're supposed to run a completion handler called completion handler and in that we're going to do dot new data and that means the background fetch successfully run and downloaded new data if it failed you're meant to use failed if it got no data you're supposed to use no data so by putting that completion handler in, that will get rid of this warning from the console and it's good practice to do it because if for some reason the internet's down and it actually fails, what it will do will tell iOS, hey, this API call failed. Maybe we should actually call it again soon when the internet comes back up rather than just being like, hey, everything was always successful. We don't actually need to call the API again for another day. So keep that in mind. Now let's close down that project. I'm going to stop our tasks and open up the new XD workspace with our Swifty JSON CocoaPods installed. So what we're going to do, go back to our app delegate and we're going to call an API in here to get the London weather. So to do that, we're going to use open weather map. I'll leave a link in the description below. The one you want to do is go to this example here and you're going to need to copy this URL and keep in mind they change this app ID every so often. So what I have now might not actually work for you. So they always change it. So it's never always exactly the same. So you want to grab the latest one. So I've just copied it now. I'm just going to leave it in the comments here and let's actually code the API call. So we're going to do let URL equals URL string and we're going to copy that URL we had. That's our actually weather API call. We're going to do print loading URL. Okay, and finally to load the URL, we're going to do URL session dot shared dot data task and we're going to do with the completion handler so we'll do with url exclamation mark and the completion handler going to add a curly bracket then a curvy bracket and we're going to go to do data response and error then we're going to do in under here we'll print done we need to move this curvy bracket to the end of error at the end, we're going to do dot resume. So what's happening is once the API has been called, it jumps into this block here and will print out done. So we simply need to do guard let data equals data and error equals nil. Else, we're going to add completion handler dot failed and return so what this guard is doing is we're getting our data making sure our error is nil otherwise if there's an error it will jump into this else block here and the completion handle will fail so that error might be the user has no internet connection the web server is down and so on so once we've got the data, we need to do a do catch block. We'll do catch. And in the catch, we're going to copy the completion handler failed. And we can get rid of the return and do print. And we can simply do failed to pass. And in this do, we'll do let JSON equals try json and in brackets do data as data so that's actually getting our json and we need to add import swifty json up the top here and to get the web we'll do let weather equals json square brackets weather and we're going to grab position zero 
and grab the key main and we're going to grab that as a string so dot string and exclamation mark to unwrap it finally to get the temperature to let temp equals json main in square brackets let's grab the main key and in the main there is a temp key which contains a temperature and that is of the data type dot double exclamation mark and finally to update the ui we call dispatch queue dot main dot async and in here we'll do vc dot update ui we're going to pass the weather we just got and finally the temperature as temp once that's done under here we're going to call completion handler dot new data and we can get rid of the old completion handler code and then we can get rid of the update ui up the top okay now before we run this we quickly need to go up to our project go to targets go to info we need to add a new key so just right click anywhere go add row and in here we're going to go app transport security settings and under this we're going to add a sub key so if we expand that down can add allow arbitrary loads and set that as yes and that's because by default ios does not allow you to call any web api unless you add it to a whitelist but at the moment we're just going to allow it to be able to call any api call even if it isn't https just to show it for the example of the tutorial so let's actually run our app now and actually see it calling the weather as a background fetch and updating our app with the latest weather information. So we can see in the console here, it's got loading URL, then done, then it updates the UI. So when we jump into here, we can see it's drizzling in London and the temperature is 280.32. I'm pretty sure that's Fahrenheit, but on the Open Weather API, they have the exact specifications as to what this number actually means. And if you're using Celsius, you can actually convert it back to Celsius. So that's how you can use background fetch guys. Just a quick note here, the reason why we had to update the UI is because in this block here, it's actually run as a background thread getting the URL API call. So by using main.async, we're ca calling the UI to update on the main thread. Otherwise it does not work at all. So you can download the source code for this below. If you liked it, give it a like and remember to subscribe for more tutorials. I'll catch you guys next time.